also known as element B1, is basically the design of your network, where you're monitoring, how often you're monitoring, with what you're monitoring. So this section here describes why you're placing your monitors where you're placing them how they meet the criteria if you're following the National Ambient Air Quality Standards requirements, then how your location meets those requirements, as well as logistical questions such as security, you need to make sure that it's behind a fence or locked, electricity, things that you're gonna need to continue your sampling at the frequency that you need it to be done at. Also, the actual probe itself. So where is it that you're actually sucking the air from for ambient air quality monitoring, for example? You need to make sure that the actual probe, the inlet, meets the requirements. It's not too close to the ground. It meets the requirements in terms of not being too close to a road. These sorts of things you need to just describe and say how your location meets them. In terms of frequency, you need to say you're monitoring for 24 hours a day or you're monitoring if you're using a filter-based sample, one in three or one in six or one in 12 day sampling. And you need to say that you're gonna to adhere to a schedule and then provide that schedule. You also need to put in something of a schedule for your overall project. So this section is very important because if you're measuring in the wrong place or in the wrong way, it doesn't matter how low your precision error is because your measurements aren't representative of the air that people are breathing. One of the terms that you're going to use in this section if you're writing this QAPP for ambient air quality monitoring is scale of representativeness. And what that means is how big of an area does the measurement system that you're using at one particular location, how big of an area that's representative of. So that is described in 40 CFR part 58 appendix. Which appendix is it? So let's look that up. 40 CFR part 58 appendix D and E. Let's open up a web browser. Let's type in ECFR and go to the Electronic Code of Federal Regulations and look up this scale of representativeness. So here we've got the titles. We know it's 40 CFR, so we go down to 40, which is Protection of the Environment. Click Go. That gives us all these different sections. We know it's 58, which is between 53 and 59, so we click there, and that pulls up these different parts of 40 CFR, part 53 through 59, and we know we want to be looking at appendices for 58, which is Ambient Air Quality Surveillance, and we go to Appendix D, Network Design Criteria for Ambient Air Quality Monitoring, and you see that Appendix E is Probe and Monitoring Path Sighting Criteria. So let's look at Appendix D first. And now when I want to find something and I'm in a web page, I click Control F and that opens up this little Find It box and I click in neighborhood because I know that probably we're going to be looking at neighborhood scale and that finds it quickly. And now we see these different definitions of spatial scales. So the definition of the spatial scale of representativeness is that it is representative of a reasonably similar, in other words, homogeneous area where you've got these different definitions including middle scale and neighborhood scale. Most of the sites that I've helped people with are neighborhood scale sites. So concentrations within some extended area of a city or community that has relatively uniform land use. Basically where you don't have a lot of changes in topology that might change the patterns of the air movement Neighborhood scale is probably going to be the scale that you're working with. So now we have to talk about probe location. So that means that the actual inlet of your air sampler is not too close to like an exit flue of any sort of incinerator, any sort of boiler. It's not too close to even a parking lot, for example, where cars could idle. It's not too close to the ground. So let's look up what the requirements are there. And based upon this example QAPP section, I see that it's in Appendix E. So I'm gonna go back to ECFR, and then down here in the search box, I'm gonna type in probe, because I know that's what I'm trying to look for, and I find it, and it has the definitions of what the probe and monitoring path sighting criteria are. It talks about this horizontal and vertical placement, spacing from minor sources, especially for some pollutants, 
spacing from obstructions. So you can't just have your probe right next to a wall, for example, or even sometimes they have these big ducts coming out of the roofs. You can't have it too close to something like that because that's going to change the pattern of airflow right around it. So this is an easy way. Just look up ECFR and find the definitions. And then you could just copy and paste this material from ECFR and say, these are the requirements and our site meets them. There is a table which you can copy from Appendix E for PM sampler distance to traffic lanes based upon the average daily traffic and the scale of representativeness. And then restate what you've read and how your site and your particular probe siting meets those requirements. If you have co-located samplers, then you need to define the distance between them and state how those meet the requirements. You can insert photographs or maps in this element. Also, photographs of your actual sampler and your probe might be appropriate in this area, or you can refer back if you had those photographs and maps in a previous section in your QAPP. So short and sweet, that is sampling and network design element 10B1.